is Barbara Chagan. Uh, Diane Marino is here with me, and Jean Morgan is on the camera today. Um, We're interviewing Larry Martella, who is a member or part of two longtime Louisville area families, the Martellas and the Baronics. So we're going to start, um, Larry, with a little bit about uh, your birth date and uh, where you were born, and then we'll go more to the background of the family and then come back to you. So, okay. So give us a little of, of your origination, say, in Louisville. Well, so. I, I was born in Boulder, Colorado, in 1947, October 21st of 1947, and came to Louisville a few days after that, and lived here in mostly my entire life, and except when I went to college and when I first got married, we moved to Broomfield for a couple of years, but couldn't stand it and had to come back to Louisville. <laughs> back to Louisville. And it was, this was like the first development, home development, new development in the Louisville area. Really? And it was a chance for us to get back to Louisville. Mm -hmm. uh, home, old homes were scarce, but uh, when they opened this development, we were the first people to so buy a home on this block. Was around was Safeway here at the time? Or? No, no, mm -hmm. Safeway, I don't, I don't believe Safeway was here. This, this development started and uh, this was the first home built on this block mm -hmm. and we, we, were, we were the first homeowners. And that would have been in the late 1970s? It was 1975 mm -hmm. when, when we uh, bought this home. Uh -huh. Let's go back now a little bit. Would you give us the name of your father and your mother? And were, were they born here? Were their parents sure. the ones that settled here? That kind of thing? Well, my father was Albert Martella, and my mother's maiden name was Rose Baronic, Rose Evelyn Baronic. Uh, they, they were married uh, right after the war. My dad was in the service in the Navy and they got married right after the war in like 1946. Mm -hmm. And they were married in Louisville, the Catholic Church. Um, the Martella family had, was in Louisville for several years. I mean, they, they originated, my great-grandparents came here or my great-great-grandparents came here in 19, I think it was 1881. And they originally moved to And from Pittsburgh, they, they came to Marshall, Colorado, and spent a few years there. I don't think that they, they lived there very long. I know my father uh, started school in Marshall at that little church that you see on right, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it looks like a church, but yeah. somebody lives yeah, there now. A, a uh, the, the only thing I know about that area is they lived right there on, on the road, you know, that comes into Louisville. And uh, I remember my father saying that uh, they had no running water. And he used to have, he would have to, him and his brothers would have to haul water from over the top of the mountain. There's a, there's a pretty good hill there, and there was a well up there somewhere. I never could find it, but there was a well, and they used to haul water down, and that's where they lived when they first uh, came. And where did the grandparents come from originally? Uh, my my great-great-grandparents, uh, they, they were both from Italy. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what towns they were, mm -hmm. they were from. But uh, they immigrated uh, from Pittsburgh to here in 1886 to Marshall. My, my grandfather's real name was Librato Martella, but he changed it when he came here to Albert. I, I, I don't, I you know, which means the same thing. Uh, a lot of names that were changed. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he was born in 1882, uh, and I believe. He, he was, um, they were from two different provinces. My grandmother was from Naples and um, I'm not sure, uh, Rockham Adolfi province is, is where my, uh, my, uh, my grandfather was from, I believe, and my grandmother was from Naples. Um, anyway, he married my grandmother, 
Colomba, Celeste Colomba. Uh, her last name was uh, Cicera. Uh, they, they were, let's see, I think they were uh, married, uh, well, I'm not sure when they were married, but they came here on December 8th in 1907. So my, my, my grandfather actually lived here in the United States for several years and then went back to Italy, married my grandmother, and they came back here in 1907. Uh, Do we even have the name of the ship? Yeah, we have the name of the ship. Uh, uh, my great-great-grandparents, uh, Vincenzo and Filomeno, uh, they came on a vessel called the Villa Marsilia. Uh, and like I say, the, they arrived in Pittsburgh May 15, 1886. Um, my, my grandfather was born in 1882 and immigrated with his mother and Filomeno on May 15, 1886. And they arrived in New York to meet my great grandfather, who came first to Pittsburgh, and that on that vessel it was the Bertomia Marcellia. You have any idea how long they must have been at sea? I yes. I can't imagine. I you know I I don't have a picture of the vessel, but um, you know, I, and and actually I think I have a picture someplace of the of the vessel that my um, grandparents, you know, which mm -hmm. would be Albert and Colomba came on. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, a picture of that somewhere, you know, we do have that. Well, they're very large families then, your, your grandparents on both sides. Yeah, quite large families. My, my, uh, my dad's family, there were nine brothers and sisters who survived. There were two that died I think one in childbirth and one died at five years old. But there, there, so there was a total of nine surviving, but there were eight brothers and one sister. I see. On my mother's side, my father, whose name is also Albert, mar you know, married Rose, and in her family there were 17 brothers and sisters. I'm not sure, I, I can't remember how many brothers, how many sisters, but there were 17 of them. And they lived in Lafayette, Colorado. And her mother was Elizabeth? Was yeah, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. and Elizabeth and Joseph Baronic were, uh, was their, their names. And they went first through Michigan, though. Yeah, they, they originally lived in, in Michigan and had relatives in Michigan. And, and I'm not sure the dates uh, exactly when they came here, but it, it may be in the, the history report that my son, my son Brian did, uh, that's got all the family history of, for just us, which would include the Bronick side and the Martella side and my wife's side. Uh, that would be wonderful for the museum to have. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Um, Celeste Colum, what was her last name? Can you spell that for me? Uh, Celeste or Colum, yeah. Well, her, her, her real name, um, her first name was Celeste, but she always went by uh, Colomba. And then what was her maiden name? Her maiden name was uh, Scacera, S-C-A-S-S-E-R-A. -S -S okay, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so what are, uh, you knew your grandparents? I knew, I, I didn't know my, my grandfather, but I did know my grandmother. I mean, I, I grew up, we were, we, she lived on the corner and we lived two houses down. And where, where was that? This is on Lincoln Avenue. Um, we lived at 1036 Lincoln and my grandmother was south of there on the next block over. Ironically, my uncle, one of my uncles lived in between. So there was my dad, Vince Martella, and then Marge Martella. That was pretty much the block. Then. It was pretty much, and and a matter of fact, uh, when my grandparents um, moved here from La from Marshall to Louisville, they actually owned quite a few homes on Lincoln Street, where my aunt Marge's home is right now, where my grandma lived. Mm -hmm. 
they, they, I don't know how they accumulated them. They bought, I guess they bought them when they bought the house. But um, my dad said at one time that she sold almost the whole block for like $700. Oh my gosh. And that was, that was during the depression. My, uh, wow. my grandfather, uh, Labrado, or which he changed his name to Albert, uh, he was very active in the mines. I mean, he, he was actually uh, uh, an orator for the unions in the mines. What's, what's that? Well, he was trying to get the miners organized as a okay. union for better working conditions and, uh -huh. and uh, you know, better wages. Uh, my dad said that, I, and I, I didn't know him, <clears throat> but my dad told me at times that he would he would go down to the bars and st and stand up on the tables, and and speak to the miners. He said he he was really a, a really good orator. Uh, and he said it, it amazed him. Because, yeah, I mean he had to learn English when he right. came here, but he but he he could really he was a very uh, good speaker with people. Huh. Now uh, that part of the history of the family. He, what, what actually happened was because he was a union organizer, um, he, was, he was blackballed in the union. He, he couldn't get a job anywhere. Okay. Now, my dad doesn't know the reason. Uh, he said he, he, his dad kind of got weird at, at that time, mm -hmm. and he doesn't know if it was because he, you know, he had a family of nine kids. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He ended up uh, taking his own life. You know, it's, and so that's why I didn't didn't really get to know him, yeah. and I I think my my uh, my dad was I think he was fairly young at the time. You know, I'm thinking, you know, 10, 10 11, 12 years old when this when this happened. So his wife, your dad's mother, was really raising. So my grand my gr grandmother uh, Colomba was left to raise nine kids, and the older kids. Well, they all ended up having to work. Mm -hmm. You know, that's they, they all well, ended up having. Any of them did they become miners? Then? Most of them did. My uh, the older ones. My uncle Vince was the oldest, and uh, my uncle Tony. Uh, they worked in the mines. Uh, I think my uncle Vince probably started when he was like ten or twelve or thirteen years old. My my dad always said he started really young, and they. The what? Their names. The names of them? Jeez, mm -hmm. I'd have to look at the picture. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. We'll get it. I mean, I can go. Yeah, I've got the picture. I can, you know, We're good. and I can, yeah. I can go down them. Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Uh, That's great. The oldest one was Vincent. The second, uh, I'll just go down the line in chronological right. age. Uh, Tony was next. My dad, Albert, was followed. Uh, Edward was next. Clarence. And then there was the one, the one girl, Marge, and uh, then Tommy, or Thomas, and uh, William, which is my Uncle Bill. And Marge is the one that's living. Marge is now still the only ones uh, that are still survived are uh, Marge, Tommy, and Bill. Okay. The last, the last three youngest we'll ones. We'll get a copy of that later for the museum. It's sure. Wonderful to have all the brothers. Well, she had quite a time with all those brothers, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure they, they, they all lived in the one house. I mean, they had oh. one house, and the, the home was still there. That's where my Aunt Marge lives now. There was uh, two bedrooms upstairs and one bedroom downstairs. Uh, I'm not sure where my Aunt Marge ended up sleeping, but all the brothers was... Sorry, they, made me laugh. They, they were all upstairs. Uh, At least we four, I think there were four to a bed. Right, right. So... Imagine. Oh uh, yeah, my dad. My dad talked about the times uh, uh, growing up. You know the way it was. Uh, he said you had to get up early in the morning because uh, Clarence, he would always get up ahead of everybody and and wear the good clothes, take somebody else's clothes. So then you know. But after that, it was kind of what was left. By the yeah, uh, there's a pretty good story about uh, my uncle Clarence. He. Um, he got up one morning <clears throat> and went duck hunting mm -hmm. with a friend. 
and uh, you would have been a teenager, a teenager then. Yeah, he, they 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 got up to go duck hunting, and uh, it really um, hacked my dad off because my dad got a fairly had a fairly new suit, and he wore that duck hunting. So they went out duck hunting to a pond uh, right out here off of South Boulder Road, and uh, they shot a duck. Well, they tried to go out and get the duck on the ice, and the, the person that was with my uncle fell through the ice. Well, my uncle tried to save him and, uh, in my dad's suit, uh -huh. and uh, the, kid, the kid died. I mean, he couldn't save him, but he was out there, you know, and the ice broke on him also. And a farmer happened to be going by and had a ladder and, and saved my Uncle Clarence from drowning. But my dad said it wasn't bad enough that, you know, this all happened. He was wearing my new suit. And he said they just ripped it off of him because of hypothermia. They just tore it off him. So he said it was one of the only suits he ever had, but Uncle Clarence ruined it. <laughs> What was that? Was it Palmina's brother? Palmina de Carlo's brother? I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah. Because I do remember her in that story. Yeah, he, I know my uncle, uh, because he tried to save him, he, mm -hmm. they gave him some kind of uh, an award or medal or something for what he did. I mean, he, he did try to go in and save this, this kid, and, uh, but he, he, he drowned and, uh, yeah. you know. Wow. But he was lucky to be alive. It was lucky that someone saw this, you know, saw him out there and, and was able to get him off the ice. So, so did, did your father go to Louisville schools? Yeah, my, my father actually, uh, we found an old picture that the, uh, the museum was looking for. They never had a 1936 uh, graduating class. Wow. And he was, one of the first ones, I, 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 he graduated in 1936, but that's when the high school was in what is known as the Fisher Apartments. He graduated from, that, that was a high school, right behind your house. Right, yes, I know. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so we found a picture of that graduation class, and I, I gave it to the museum, so that, that kind of sewed up the class of 1936. All of them, I think, uh, my uncle Vince, I, I'm not sure if, if he really graduated. I think it's in the history that, that we have, but uh, most of them did graduate, and uh, all of them were, you know, played sports in high school and, you know, and that type of thing. Do you know any of the mines that they worked in those days? Yeah, and I do have that, and I, I could probably get it off of that. Yeah. the history that my son did. I mean, it, it, it talks about all the mines. Uh, they were mostly Louisville area? Yeah, uh, actually, you know, I, I know they worked in the Superior Mine, the mine that was in Superior, and I believe they worked in the Black Diamond. Now, my, my, grandfather, my grandfather in the mines was uh, an explosive uh, person. He, uh, you know, set the charges for for um, dynamite and stuff like that. We did, um, and I think I donated some of that to the museum. I actually had some drill bits that he used, that they drilled into the mm -hmm. coal or into the rock to, you know, that he had a little toolbox that had a black diamond, you know, it has a black diamond mine yeah. and a signet uh, on it. So that stayed in the family. Yeah, sense. so yeah, he worked in the mines. He, <clears throat> he, he, in, he dabbed in other stuff too. He. Um, my, my, my grandfather actually owned a gold mine in Ward. I actually got to go to the gold mine. Uh, I remember going as a fairly young kid. Uh, you know, my grandma then owned it. Mm -hmm. Of course, we all went in a mine, and when I got home, there, I had like 10 wood ticks on me, you know, from, from come, going in and out of that mine. I remember, that's why I remember it, because of all those wood ticks. But uh, yeah, he, he dabbled in, he had a gold mine, and uh, he also uh, uh, had money in oil. But what, eventually what happened is during the Depression, I mean, when the Depression start, started, he lost, mm -hmm. he lost everything. You know, my grandmother still owned the gold mine, and I think she sold it, I was probably, 
I would say 14, maybe 13, 14 years old. I remember when she sold it. And never, I guess these guys were going to work it, but I never did find out if they ever found any gold in it, you know, or if it made anything, made any money. And was it up in the it was, area around? Uh, it, was a, it was in Ward, Colorado, up by Jamestown and in, in the Ward area. How you bought it, I, I don't know, but. So what about your grandmother? You knew her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She she was uh, she she learned English. I the way my you know hearing from my father, she learned English fairly quickly, and I remember him him telling me that uh, some of the families in town that moved that came here that were Italian, well they couldn't uh, you know read letters that they got and whatever, but my grandmother. They would come to my grandmother, my grandmother would go there, and she could. Uh, she would be the translator. She was a translator for a lot of, uh, a lot of the people until they learned learned English. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, she was she was mostly a homemaker. She remarried. Uh, let's see his name. What, I can't remember his name. It's in that history also. But she, mm -hmm. she re, she remarried, and um, you know. And then, but, but then got a divorce. Uh, she wasn't married, you know, that long. But I, I mean, you know, at least there was some help for her, right. yeah. um, that. you know, yeah. during that period. I mean, because she was, they were going through depression, and mm -hmm. they had a, she had a huge garden. I mean, I remember working in the garden. I mean, she kept that until she, you know, couldn't do it anymore. But she, uh, they had a huge garden, and uh, you know, lived off of what they grew and. But all the boy, all the boys worked. I I know that all the boys worked. My I know my dad worked at a very young age at uh, Jaco's store. Um, I think my uncle Ed worked there. The two older brothers worked in the mines. I mean, so all of them had to do yeah. you know really? some yeah, kind of work to family. to survive. Yeah. Did your grandmother ever talk about her um, her family and growing up and? No, you know, she, she never, she never talked a lot about, it. I know we, uh, she kept in touch. I think she had a sister or a cousin or something that she kept in touch with for a while. But, uh, she was, she was more of a person that, uh, you know, she always looked to the future. I mean, she, you know, she, I don't think she ever, uh, had any qualms about coming here. Mm -hmm. She always seemed happy and, uh, you know about being here in the United States, and uh, she never talked too much about you know that I knew of about her growing up in Italy or, like or whatever. A person. Yeah, she just uh, I mean there's there's pictures of her. She was in the Catholic Church, an Abbot member of the Catholic Church. There's pictures of them plucking chickens, and mm -hmm. I mean she they always had bazaars. She always worked the bazaars and you know cooked and. Uh, you know, did things like that for the church. The church was uh, her central, you know, I mean, that was very important to her, was the church. And so, Larry, did all the kids go to Catholic school? No, and if, I don't think the Catholic, see, the Catholic school never started, I don't think, till like 1905 or something. So most of them were in the public schools. Okay. But, uh, but they were all, you know, raised as, as Catholics in, in the church. Um, so how did your grandmother find time to uh, do all the things that in the community is? is I don't know. She yeah. was. I mean, she not. It was. I mean, as I was growing up, I mean, both of my parents. My mother worked at the city market in in Louisville. Uh, she, uh, you know, she cut meat. I mean, she did almost any everything you could down there. Uh, so she, she worked, uh, and I was probably, you know, she, I must have been six, seven, but I went to the Catholic school, and at lunchtime, that's when you could go home for lunch, uh, I would go to my grandmother, uh, you know, Coloma's yeah. home, you know, I'd go to her house and she would feed me lunch, you know, and uh, I'd go back to school. and. Uh, I just want to go back to the city market, because your mom worked at two of the stores. She worked at the 
The one on Main Street, right? Yeah, she, there was two city markets. I mean, Charlie, Charlie Thomas owned the one. It was right where the bank is, right? I don't know where the bank is now. It was the second, second building in from that corner that the bank's on, and that's where the city market was at one time. And then uh, she worked there at that in the old store, but then when they uh, built a new one, which was the old post office, uh, Lucky, Pine, Lucky Pine now, uh, oh, she, okay. she stayed mm -hmm. and, and worked with, you know, still worked there. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, cutting meat and... She took orders on the phone too. Yeah, took orders on the phone. I mean, they. I mean, everybody had no. You know, in those days, uh, everybody trusted everybody. Sure. I know uh, Charlie Thomas had uh, little books. I don't know if I don't know if I have one of those, but I mean, he had an account for everybody, and they would just uh, order groceries. They delivered them. When they could pay, they paid. When they paid, they would they could they would pay, and they they all had a running tab uh, with him and. Uh, you know, I, I can remember them delivering groceries even to our house, and my mom worked down there. But you know, they had an old panel truck that would, you know, had some kid driving around, and he had dropped off the groceries. So they just most people just called in the orders, and and I would say a small town. It was nice what you called up because, like, yeah, we were talking to them. Oh, hi, Rosie. Yeah. You know, and she knew everybody and what they wanted. And yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, Everybody knew everybody. I mean, when growing up in town, there was mm -hmm. when we grew up here, there was like two thousand people. I can remember, you know, as I was growing up, I remember the outhouses. I remember the uh, having baths, you know, once or twice a week in a wash tub in front of the the stove, you know, in front of the oven, you know, with the oven door open. I mean, uh, I remember going to the outhouse. And I, I remember when they finally got sewers and they dug, dug all the uh, sewer lines in town. And that, <clears throat> that was the most fun most of us kids ever had because, <laughs> I mean, nowadays they would never let you do that. I mean, nobody worried about cave-ins or anything like that. Right. But yeah. we, could, we could, in front of our house on the top of Lincoln Street, we could get into the ditch, into the, where they were digging for the sewers and end up clear down Main Street, I mean, they just dug up the streets. I mean, there was, you know, right, there was a room on, you know, for cars to get by, but then there was these piles of dirt. Mm -hmm. And I remember playing on those piles of dirt and getting in the, getting in the sewer lines and- Getting in those ditches? Was there it was like a big maze. I mean, you didn't know where you was at. You, you, oh, could, okay. you could run around down there and end up three blocks away, well, you know. How, and, how deep were the ditches? Well, they were deep there. I mean, they were- Over your head? They, I've, I've heard stories of, some caving in in places. That yeah, I, I, I don't remember any, but us kids were in there all the time. Of course, we were always getting into trouble for being in there because we would get on the dirt piles yes, and have were, King of the Mountain and, and, and end up in the ditches. Yeah, all the dirt would end up back in there. It was in the 50s, early, Maybe early 50s. Yeah, I, I remember, um, you know, the dirt streets. I mean, it was everything was dirt. Um, they used to bring in, when it would get real dusty, they would bring in the red ash from the, you know, from the mine dump. They'd bring in red ash yeah, and put it on the roads so they wouldn't be so, so dusty. But it's uh, got on everything. Oh, yeah. I, I remember, uh, you know, in, the, in those days growing up, uh, everybody had what they called ash pits, which was an incinerator in the backyard either. And most of them, most people had nice ones, you know. I mean, they were made of cinder block or cement had a hole on the top did all the trash burning oh yeah and i i it was great it was great in the summertime or i mean in the winter time because as kids you're playing outside while everybody had their their mm -hmm. you know ash pits on fire you could sit up there and warm up warm your hands on them on the way home from school there was always problems though in the neighborhood with with the mothers with the housewives mm -hmm. because if somebody had their clothes on the line and you started your ash pit on fire, oh. there was trouble. There was... Right, well, what did they do about it, though? I mean, well, they had an agreement. Money. They, you know, but if somebody, you know, they would let them know, hey, you, you know, I'm, I got my wash out, mm -hmm. and you're burning your trash. I mean, it gets on the smell of the clothes. So sure. I, I think they had some kind of deal worked out there 
you know, amongst the uh, housewives when wash days were. So long as they were getting along. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, they didn't have washer and dryer, so if you hung your clothes out on the line and the neighbor across the alley starts their ash pit on fire, well, now you, you know, you smell like trash. Yeah. Just going back to the, the, the tunnels, obviously it was pretty much everybody just ran all over town and it was safe to do so. I mean, no one was keeping an eye on you, right? No. They were, they, I don't know, you know, I just remember that you would think that they would went street to street, you know, mm -hmm. but it was like a maze. I mean, it went blocks. I mean, uh, you know, it wasn't just, you know, you build, dig this hole, and you do one street, and then you go to the next, cover that up, and they had them dug everywhere. I mean, so I mean, yeah, you could get in. They had even pipes or anything. Put in. They didn't put the pipe in till the very end, you know. And I mean, we would we would be in those things, uh, just going crazy. I mean, it, it was fun. I mean, we'd ride our bikes up up there. We'd have dirt clawed fights and playing an army. I mean, the hills were huge. I mean, they were as, as you know, the dirt that they dug up was, to me, I mean, of course, I was a little, you know, young, but yeah. they seemed pretty high this to me. Be mostly in what we call the old town. Yeah, right yeah. I, I remember uh, when they put the curb and gutters and sidewalks in, I mean, uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, th this town was full of trees. I mean, you could, yeah. you, like on our block on Lincoln mm -hmm. Street, there were so many trees in the summertime, you could drive up up the block and the sun wasn't shining. I mean, it was shade because they all, they all met over the top of the roads like that. But uh, when they put the curb and gutters in, uh, in the sidewalks, well, all those trees were out there where they had to be, so they cut them all down. Except I know of only one person that refused to do it, and that, she lived behind my Aunt Marge, her name was Mrs. Atkins. She refused to let them cut those, tree down, those trees down, and they're still here today. Those trees are still there. They, do. they went around. Yeah. I mean, they went on the other side of the trees, yeah. and she wouldn't let them cut them down. But you every, know, everyone else did agree. That everybody else they agreed. Wanted, they wanted that. Sewer, they well, sewer yeah. Sewer. I mean, I, I remember, yeah. you know, when the wind would blow. I mean, everybody's house would be full of dust and you know dirt and stuff. So they wanted the, you know. They, they wanted the curb and gutter, they wanted the sidewalks, they wanted asphalt, you know, uh, on the roads. Um, I mean, of course, uh, you know, us kids, I mean, we didn't know much about the dirt versus the asphalt, but I mean, uh, when wintertime came, we would sled down those hills, you know, we used to, have, I mean, there'd be a hundred, every kid in town would be on the hills. And the city was good about it, because they would actually block off one of the, either Lincoln Street or the street down, Block it off so and let us. Yeah, but the snow. Yeah, the snow didn't last as long once we got the asphalt. I mean, uh, you know, they melted a lot faster with the dirt. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you could go several days before mm -hmm. you could, had to quit. Mm -hmm. But while we're talking about childhood, and we talk, I'd love to hear more of the activities you did. But um, I don't know if it was during when you were young, but there was a, a polio epidemic. I I, rem I don't know if it was an epidemic or not. I, I don't remember an epidemic. I remember when the vaccine came out that, um, you know, standing in line. And it was at the old community center where the Memory Square is now. I, I remember being in line to get the polio shot. And they, they closed swimming pools and well, beaches and I just bring everything it up because, during that time. Um, one of our cousins, Sarah, got polio. And I didn't know if that was when you were little. It, 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 it was pro I think she was really, really young at the so time. I mean, that's, I think it's before they had the vaccine. Okay, that, so it was before you were? Yeah, I mean, I mean, when, uh, I don't think the vaccine, I'm not sure when the vaccine came out, but I remember getting, you know, having to get, uh, you know, polio vaccinated. And I think we, all that was. Because I just, um, I remember my mom talking about you and my brother were all playing around that day with, Sarah, and then she got it, so my mom said yeah. quite a few cases. I didn't know if you remember anything. I don't. I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember. You know that. I, I. All I did was heard that Sarah did have it, but I don't. I never knew the specifics of how that happened. Okay. So how many were in your immediate family? Yeah. For how many brothers and sisters yeah. do I have? Yeah. It's just me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. You're an, you're an only child. I was an only child. Um, 
like I say, my, uh, my Uncle Vince and Joseph, Josephine lived next door to my mom and dad. They had one son, uh, Ron. Mm -hmm. Then my Aunt Marge lived two blocks, or a block down, right across where my Uncle Clarence lived. And I th he had, how many kids, Clarence? I think he had four or five. So I mean, you grew up with four, your cousins five. being really, uh, All of us, almost like yeah, brothers and sisters. And you were so close. Clarence lived on the corner, block down, and right across the alley, my Uncle Ed did. They had, you know, they got four kids. So we were a pretty close-knit family. I mean, uh, every, I mean, almost everybody in the family could meet, you know, was at my grandmother's house every Sunday for, you know, something. Yeah, we, um, uh, you know, she always had big meals on Sunday. Most of the time it was either spaghetti or ravioli. And, you know, it's, it, was, uh, it was pretty wild. Did she can? Uh, oh, yeah. She, she can. Right she canned, uh, you know, almost everything in her garden, you know, canned tomatoes. And, I mean, she had a huge garden. Uh, did really that carry huge. down to your mom? Sorry. Oh, no, no, that's okay. Did, did, your, did your mom do canning? And no, my, my, she, my mom she always, working. my mother was always, I mean, she, I, as far as I can remember, I think I was like six or seven when she went to work for oh, Charlie okay. Thomas. But your mom had, she was so skilled. Oh yeah, she, she was so, sewed a lot. I mean, she, uh -huh. my, she, my mom uh, could, well, you know, until she died, every time we needed something hemmed or, you know, she was the one that, the one that, that did it. and. Uh, I mean, she could crochet, and I mean, she, uh, you know, uh, needle, well, not needlepoint, what's, uh, embroidery. Embroidery. embroidery, she did a lot of embroidery yeah. stuff, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say, and I know it's a skill that maybe people don't do that to me, but she was probably one of the best ironing women in town, because many people came to her and hired her to do their ironing. Yeah, sometimes she would do ironing, but, uh, uh, a lot of times she did it for free. I mean, for, you know, I know like Sarah, you know, our cousin, she was a teacher and my mom would go over there and get bored and after she retired and go over there and do Sarah's ironing. I mean, uh, she would come up here, you know, I mean, Kathy and I or my wife and I would be off to work and she'd come up here and clean the house. We'd come home, the house would be cleaned or and all the ironing and or washing and ironing done, you know, so she was always on the go. I mean, my mom was... You know, she's Energetic pretty active. And and she, well, she never drove. Right? She, she knew everybody. I mean, uh, she knew everybody in town, mainly because, you know, working at, at Thomas's, every, you know, uh, she just knew everybody in town. Everybody knew her. So. She walked everywhere. Yeah, and she would walk everywhere. She, she never drove a day in her life. Uh, well, she did. She did once, but when they were, t my aunt, Loy, was trying to teach my mom how to drive. And she ran into my grandfather's chicken coop down at in, in Lafayette, and that's the last time she was behind Sounds a wheel. Just what happened with my mother? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. never. She never, but never she drove. She learned to drive when I learned to drive. My grandmother yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She never, after that, never so, what do you remember about uh, what? Did, what did you and your cousins do other than running those ditches and things? What did you do for fun? Well, we. Uh, you were growing up. At that time, the Rex Theater, which is now back as a, as a restaurant, I mean, uh, we, we went to the shows a lot, you know, down at the Rex Theater. Uh, Cowboy movies? Or? What was that? Cowboy movies? Oh, mostly, yeah. Anything that was playing, it didn't matter. I mean, uh, that, that was uh, an experience in itself. Uh, the, the owners of that, uh, who was it, Carmi, uh, Milano, oh, Romanos. Romanos. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, you know, of course, most of the people in those shows was kids. Well, there would be a few adults, but if we would get down there, you know, and if you start talking or causing any problems, any noise down there, well, Carmi would come down and make you move. I mean, we would all start off as kids. I mean, we'd have two, two rolls of kids mm -hmm. getting ready to watch the movie. By the end of the movie, Everybody was separate. There'd be nobody in the, the aisle we started in the, you know, there'd be nobody in there. We would all be in different spots. I mean, can you imagine today somebody coming and telling you, okay, I'm tired of listening to you talk, you're disrupting, you go up, you got to move. And he'd, he would grab you and, put, and make you, he'd put you in the seat he wanted you in. And I 
<laughs> yeah, and if you were if you were really noisy, you would go to the clear to the back, nice. and you'd have to stand. You'd be sit next to, and he'd be right in back of you where the curtain was. All right. You know. <laughs> I remember a lot of times being like there. Oh yeah, Saturday. if you were back there, he would tell you the movie as it was going on. I don't know, you know, he was he was a funny guy. I mean, uh, you know, you you would be standing there and he'd say, "Watch this, what happened now? This guy's going to get shot or something," you know, and you go, you know, yeah. he couldn't. He yeah. he was talking just as much as everybody else. <laughs> well, and then and then he, um, you know, they opened the L and L uh, drive-in theater. Oh, you know, yes. right it right where across from, you know, what was right at the outskirts of between Lewis and Lafayette right now. That's where uh, Clinica Campus Cena is. Yeah, it's it was right there. So uh, by then you were maybe teenagers. Oh, when we were teenagers, we were out there, and I mean it. It uh, the big thing for going out there was sneaking in, and Carmi owned that too. So we would put guys in the trunk, you know, and you know we didn't have a lot of money. I mean at that time. I mean, you had cars. I mean, gas was 25 cents a gallon. I mean, two two dollars worth. You know, you could go forever. You know, I mean, you could go all over. But yeah, we'd we'd hide in the trunks and you know, go in and uh, he'd catch you. I mean, he he'd come around with the flashlight. So you could count the number of people that. Were oh yeah, he could. He knew. You know, he knew who you were. I mean, because he knew everybody in town. He knew who you were, and he would come around and say, "Now I know you didn't pay." You know, so you, if he caught you, you were in trouble. If you saw him coming, you know, everybody hid. The guys used to, one guy would drive in and we'd drop him off out on the road and then they would, uh, you know, climb the fence and come in, you know, sneak in, you know, go through the field and, and sneak in. I, I remember uh, they electrified one of those fences one time. I remember some of the guys, uh, just as they were, getting over the fence that it shot a bolt of electricity and that's the last time they came that way you know so would that have been in the 50s it, it was in uh early the late 50s early 60s you mm -hmm. know i mean i think it went uh it was probably around till this probably so 60. Is, is that what oh, it went to the late 70s yeah it, it went i mean it's it started it's right behind there. I mean, okay. it's right. It's further east of, it. yeah, yeah. further, a little further east of, of the powwow. Uh -huh. There's nothing there at all to show that there has been a drive. No, there's no mark. No. Mm -hmm. No, you couldn't tell it was there. No. So did you, you went to Louisville High, High School? Yeah, I went to Louisville High School. And that would have been when it was on Main Street? Was what? On Main Street? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, we. Uh, and you went to St. Louis School. Yeah, I went to St. Louis mm -hmm. till the, uh, uh, at that time the the school went to the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. uh, went to, we went to the eighth grade and then I, then we went into high school. Mm -hmm. You know, Louisville High. Mm -hmm. There was always the Catholic school. Well, we always had a football game in grade school. Mm -hmm. It was the Catholicers school. against the Publicers. Mm -hmm. it, it got pretty wild. I mean, there was no pads or nothing. I mean, this was yeah. just between the kids, right, right. you know, and, and yeah. their school, I mean, the, the elementary school for the public schools was right across the street from the Catholic school. But since you were going to grade eight, that might have been sixth, seventh, eighth grade, the football team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we st we, it usually started around, you know, every class. I mean, uh, we played football out in the... Uh, you know, that's all we did, you know, is the boys played football. I don't know what the girls did, but the boys played you football. Ended up on the same teams oh, in high school. Yeah. And then we all end up, you know, we played against each other. Yeah, you know, we'd have right. a, a, they call it, it was supposed to be touch football, but we ended up tackling and stuff. No pads. I mean, it got pretty round. Was there organized, though, like Little League football? Actually, Little League football started, I think I was the first one to play in Little League. And I was, that was the last... I was a, you know, they started several teams at different age groups, but I think it was uh, 11 and 12 year olds, and I was 11 and 12 when it started, when they had the first team. Mm -hmm. Did you play that at Miners Field? Uh, we actually practiced on the high school, and uh, most most of the games were at the high school at that time, and then they started having them at Miners after that. But did you uh, play Lafayette? 
kids at that time, or was that a little bit later? And, and that, that was pretty good, too. When, when I was growing up, Louisville and Lafayette, they played each other uh, back when my uncle, you know, my uncles played. Mm -hmm. But then they quit playing each other because there was brawls all the time. There, was, there would be a football game, then a fight after the game. So they quit playing. Uh, you know, they, they stopped them from playing. The school districts had to stop it because it, was, uh, I, I, it got out of control. You know, I mean, they, they fought. I mean, there was big fist fights between Louisville and Lafayette. They never got along very well at that, you know, together. I mean, those two teams, and they were always vying for a championship. You know, I mean, uh, they, were, they were two tough teams. Louisville and Lafayette were really good football teams. And, and then they started up again for a while. So then, yeah, they, they went. I think when I was in high school. Yeah. Well, actually, when I was a senior in high school was the first game that Louisville and Lafayette played for yeah, like 20, they had it was like 20 some years, oh, 20 years. Okay. They had never let them play. And then they formed a new league and Lafayette was in the league. And then I actually got to play the first game uh, after all those years and that in itself was amazing because you know we were a small town I mean yeah. and everybody in town went to the game you know so it, it was fairly crowded every Friday night mm -hmm. there'd be a lot of people you know our stands would be all full mm -hmm. but for that game I remember coming out of the locker room you know to go onto the field and it was unbelievable there were people all the way around the field. I mean, enclosed the entire field. I mean, people came from all over, uh, from Boulder. I mean, they just, everybody came to that game there because they didn't know what was going to happen there, after the there game. there a lot of warnings beforehand that if we start this Oh, yeah, there was articles. I remember articles in the paper about, you know, there would be, you know, there are going to be controls and, and all that, that type of thing. I mean, uh, we, at that time, it was like towards the end of the season. Uh, we, our football team, we were undefeated. Uh, we won the we won the championship. Lafayette didn't have at that that year didn't have that a very good team. I mean, they had been beaten a couple times, so everybody expected that we were going to beat you know we were going to beat the hell out of Lafayette, you know. And I mean, it the end of the, the score was. The score ended up being, uh, I think, it was nine to six. Wow! So it turned out I, to uh, be. So, uh, yeah, they I mean, were ready it, for it, that game. It was, it was like two points. We only beat them by two points. I mean, it was, I mean, it was a, it was a hard hitting game. But uh, were you a junior or a senior? I was a senior. senior. When, so what year you graduated? In 1965. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, they didn't have. Terrible brawls, sir. No, there was no they brawl. Made it through it, so then <clears throat> they made it through. So after that, well, there was there wasn't brawls, but there was. I, I remember. Uh, fierce, fierce competition. Oh yeah, I, I remember the following year. I was in college at the time. I remember the following year, uh, something happened. Well, Lafayette burned uh, some, bonfire. burned the bonfire or something. Right. Well, the Louisville kids went over and burned their, what they call the crow's nest down, which is their, you know, oh, where they announced yeah, the games right, from. Right. They, they burned that down. So there was, oh, you know, they were. Just oh, but that was before, the, before they ended up being in one high school. Yeah, was exactly. Class. Yeah. So that, that must have been interesting, too, by the time they. Yeah, I mean, and then they. You know, right, and they formed, you know, the one yeah. school, Centaurus, yeah. and they ended up having a pretty yeah. good, yeah. they always had fairly decent football teams so out there. So what did you do um, after high school? Well, I went to college. Um, <clears throat> actually, I, I worked, when I first got out of school, in, uh, in high school, I worked for a few months, and I started school in the winter. Uh, of course, that was during the, um, you know, that's when Vietnam, you know, started. and. Mm -hmm. So I, I was in college. Uh, a lot of my friends I uh, graduated from went to Vietnam. You know, Where did you, uh, you go to college? I started school at, at Adams State down in Alamosa. I went there for one year and then uh, transferred to Greeley, uh, to University of Northern Colorado, and that's where I graduated from up there. 
but uh, but a lot of you, I mean during those years. You were in college, so you didn't end up in service. No, I, I was I I had a student status mm -hmm. until um, I think I was a senior at the time. Uh, Kathy and I had just gotten married, and that's when they started the draft. You know, they start. It was the first draft mm -hmm. that they they had. So I remember. Uh, me and some friends, we kept friends with my wife and I, uh, both of us were in the same situation and we waited because it was on the radio and they were pulling, you know, dates out, mm -hmm. you know, of, so you got from the date they pulled out of there, you knew what your, what number you were. I, I remember I, I was like uh, 146, you know, I would have been to 146. Well, before, actually before I graduated, uh, I mean, while I was a, still a freshman, I remember having to get on a bus in Alamosa, and I actually had to go uh, have a physical and all that stuff, you know, I had the physical and all that, but uh, after the draft thing, I mean, I never did, I was never called up, and I, I didn't volunteer because I was still in school, and it was kind of winding down when I did get out, out of school. So did you, did you meet uh, Kathy in Louisville in college? Or yeah, we we met in in high school. I mean, uh, we both went to the same school, uh -huh. and uh, and so when were when were you married? We were married in 1968. Can I ask you a question before I forget? Um, Louisville, everybody had nicknames. Did members of your family, your aunts and uncles? Oh, yeah. Everybody had a nick. Do you want, you want to know the nicknames of them? Yeah, I mean, just because that's so fun, yeah. Uh, uh, my uncle, Tony, I don't know, they called him Blackie. He had a birthmark on his forehead, and I, I think that's where he got that from. They called him Blackie. My dad, they always called Chico. Now, I think what happened is my dad, my uncle Clarence, love the Marx Brothers and I they used to go to the show you know and just yeah. I guess they would just laugh there you know they love the Marx Brothers so my dad's nickname was Chico my uncle Ed's name uh, nickname was Fatty uh, my uncle Clarence was Gracho <laughs> Aunt Marge didn't have an aunt, she didn't well Marguerite is what they called her you know they just called her by an Italian name Marguerite uh, uncle Tommy was Tomas, they always called him Tomas, and uh, my Uncle Bill they always called Guido. So most of them had nicknames, except for my Uncle Vince, and I think it's because he was the oldest and he would probably beat the hell out of them if, <laughs> if they called him anything. And then, just to, just to make sure I, I didn't miss it, but um, the year your, your dad was born and died, the year your mom was born and died, do you remember those? The what? The year, their birth dates. Oh jeez, I can't. It, it's on the. It's in that document. We can get that from there. Now, um, and you have two children. And yeah. Do they live here? Or? Yeah, Brian. Brian and uh, his wife actually uh, live in my mother's home, my mom and dad's house. When my mom and dad died, my uh, Brian was living in Broomfield at the time, and. Uh, he said he didn't want that house to go. I mean, he didn't want us to sell it or anything. He said uh, he wanted to live there. So I turned my mom and dad's home over to my son and my daughter, Rebecca, or Becky. And then Brian, they had it appraised, we got it appraised, and then Brian bought Becky's share. And uh, so Brian is the current owner of my mom and dad's house. And, and he has two children. Uh, Clara and uh, Kale, and Becky, it, lives and Becky lives in Erie, and she she's her last name is Middleton now, and she has two children, uh, Cameron and uh, Riley. So you worked. Um, you were one of the key people that worked on the 1976 celebration for Westville. Yeah, I was. I was on the uh, bicentennial committee for the hundred year celebration, uh, me and Eugene Carancy and 
I think uh, I think Lawrence Henrietta was on there. There were several people on there. So I guess from your perspective, since you did a lot of research, and what, what overall is just you know what Louis Bell? Why you know why do you want to be here? What do you why are you here? What is just so what do you love about it? it it's hard you know it's hard to put a finger on it. Uh, we we lived in Broomfield for we bought a home in Broomfield after we after I graduated from college in '71, and we were only there a year or two, and that was like uh, I always call it the city of the living dead. I mean, uh, it was so transient; nobody knew. I mean, you kind of knew your neighbors, but they didn't want to know you. Um, I you can know, imagine how it's grown. Yeah, after I coming, that sign, you know, ten thousand people were going to be ten thousand. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you, there, there wasn't uh, like a center. Community. You know, there wasn't a center in Broomfield or anything. In Louisville, their main streets kind of like the center. Mm -hmm. I mean, but everybody kind of uh, knew everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, it, it's still great. My wife and I will walk take a walk and invariably somebody drives by honks a horn at us we knew from you know 30 years ago 40 years ago you know we were kids I mean you still run into those people you knew uh, and it seems like the people who are moving in now are they're, they're kind of like us you know I mean they're more friendly and uh, they want a, a smaller they want a smaller community and uh, they want to be you know want to know people you know they want to be friends with their neighbors and get to know them, and that's that's the way it was. I mean, growing up, uh, it's just something. Uh, we moved back; it was still small, and we knew a lot of people here, and uh, we missed them. Yeah, you just missed them. Did you find that uh, when you moved back that you people you grew up with you still did a lot with when you were young and raising kids? Oh, oh yeah, we, you know, we still, uh, you know, and we still see people that live here uh, that we grew up with, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, in my case, uh, you know, did a lot of fishing and hunting with the guys I grew up with, and we did it when we were kids, and we continue to do it, you know. Uh, so there's still quite a, f a few that live here, you know. What businesses that were here and say up until that you miss that aren't here anymore that you remember going to a lot? Oh, I, I remember, uh, <clears throat> well, growing up in, in Louisville, I guess one of our favorite spots was Jensen's Canteen. You know, it was right across the street from the high school. Uh, Carl Jensen, I can't remember. Do you remember what her name was? Mrs. Jensen is all we ever knew. You know, we could call him Carl, but she was Mrs. Jensen. Uh, but we would, for lunch, everybody went over there and they had a hamburger. Kind of a high school. Yeah, it was a high school, school hangout. They had, pin, they had a pinball machine there. It wasn't a very big place, but everybody seemed to get in there somehow and have. Is that building still there? No, it's uh, no, uh, right across the street from the high school. It's where that uh, middle school gets a little office. It's an office mm -hmm. building there. Mm -hmm. They they had a gas. You know, it's one of the first uh, serve yourself gas stations in town. So you would just drive up. You could put a quarter in there and get a gallon of gas. You know, or put fifty yeah. cents. Uh, I, I remember a few times. You know, they broke. Well, there would be a line down Main Street. <laughs> You know, clear down the end of Main Street, uh, and if it was late at night, they didn't know it, and then everybody would fill their tanks up, and they'd be out the money, but nobody ever, you know, hmm. he, you know, it would just break, you know, and it would just pump gas. So yeah. it, the word, it's amazing, the word would go around. Well, it normally went around through the kids first. Right. You know, some kid would go in there to get fifty cents worth. Realized he didn't and have it, pay. And it really, it's not. Hey, it's still coming. You know, fill their tank up while well, they had. Well, we used to do what they call drag and main. We'd go up, we would, mm -hmm. there's a curve around the high school. We would drive around that curve, go down past uh, the Blue Parrot, make a new turn at the Blue Parrot, go up back up to the high school, go around the, the oval. Back, and we did that all night long. And every time you went by somebody you knew, you honked the horn. Right. <laughs> you could have honked at him. You probably honked at the same person 20, 30 times a night. The people on Main Street, I don't know how they could even. I mean, because the horn was honking constantly down there. I mean, I mean, you would go by one. I mean, literally, you'd drive by, honk the horn. 
drive by the guy coming back the, the next time, he'd go turn around, you go turn around, you come back again, honk the horn again. So it was mostly, you know, dragging Maine and uh, you're talking. I mean, you get together, you know, we'd just stop and talk at the high school. And so what, in our last couple minutes here, any piece you would like, wisdom, something you'd like people to know about your family, or Westville, or? Uh, uh, not, not really. I, I, one thing I'd like to say is my, I remember my, the, my grandmother receiving an award at one time because she had the most sons in the war at the same time. Oh. And they, they gave her a medal and yeah. when they asked her to say something, she says, I don't want the damn medal, I just want my sons to come home. Oh, my so. Thank you so Thank much. You so